Alright guys, this is going to be my first video in a very long time. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to find major liquidity points. So a liquidity point is essentially an area of support and resistance in which a lot of trading is going to happen. So when a liquidity point occurs, you generally will see a reversal into the other direction, or at least a lot of chop in that area showing that there's a lot of trading and battling between the bulls and the bears going on there. So um, just to give you guys a quick example of uh, an asset that we can kind of utilize as our example here. Um, we're just going to take a look at Bitcoin and how the liquidity points apply on the chart for Bitcoin. So first and foremost, when you choose a chart that you want to tr analyze um, in crypto, especially these large caps, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to choose a pair that represents uh, spot trading, not futures trading, because futures volume can be easily manipulated. Um, I find BTC USDT to be a, a pretty reliable source of volume that's uh, organic and reliable to, to analyze. So without further ado, what we're going to do here is we're just going to start with. Um, so obviously this right here is a large point in which trading occurred. Um, we're going to start from here because we're going to go in a timeline from historical to now. So if you look at the chart here, um, you can see that there is around an entire year or two's worth of action that occurred here. And once we finally broke out of this trading zone, we had a major bull market. Um, that is because there was a lot of trading going on here, a lot of bulls and bears battling. And as soon as the bears had lost that battle, uh, seeing a breakout on this level for the fourth time, uh, generally the more tests we have, uh, and then a breakout occurring after all of those tests, we see a quite of a large move occurring. So that's what happened here. So um, eventually, you know, bears gave up. We broke out here, um, you know, created some resistance here. Um, obviously, there is a little bit of resistance here because of this 20K level that occurred back then. So when we hit that liquidity point of 20K, that was a historical level from before, bulls and bears started battling again because no one really truly knew where the direction of the asset was headed. So once that broke through, um, obviously 30K was also a pretty uh, questionable level, you know, because people were already timing the top at 20K. So when 30K came about, people began questioning that area as well. Um, obviously, same thing goes for this 40k level we saw a rejection at the 40k level liquidity zone that's just because of whole numbers in bitcoin when it's reaching all-time highs we're always going to see some kind of liquidity tests uh here we go so we bounced back down to the 30k level you know this support zone uh obviously it was a psychological zone so once you go back to this whole number again and you have the bulls and the bears battling once again here um obviously the bulls came out on top and then we saw a breakout to this area here. So this was the 50 to 60K level um, in which it was actually 50, 60 to 65, 58 to 65 around here. So the reason why this level was actually uh, pretty close to the top is probably because everyone was calling for 100K. So when people are calling for 100K and that's sort of the narrative, um, but the pump started at 3K, obviously you're not gonna make it to 100K. That's a little bit optimistic. So uh, it's probably you know pretty expected that we topped out way before then. So what happened here is we topped out and then you saw the major sell off here, right? So basically bulls got slaughtered here and then we re came back to this liquidity zone that was here at 30K. So when you see a 50% drop in crypto generally you know there's enough buyers that are willing to come back in and create some more momentum which is what happened here um so came back here uh rejected a little bit again you know here 
to create some kind of questionable resistance, uh, not allowing bulls or bears to really guess where this is going to go. Because obviously, if you're looking at the chart up to this point, you think there's a possible cup and handle. So um, the people who are probably buying this breakout and cup and handle probably got uh, played by the market makers. Uh, which created a sell-off here back to this liquidity point. So once we came back to this liquidity point, um, what happened was we came out and tried to create that cup and handle look again. So when you create that cup and handle look again, you probably, the elites or whoever had the most money was able to lure in a lot of top buyers. So when the top buyers came in, uh, well, first of all, it went a little bit above this point because there was probably some stop losses that were shorting here uh, with respect to uh, stop loss up upon the break. So what they did probably was they broke the all-time high to create that liquidity from shorts getting stopped out for themselves to sell into. And then that's when the bear market began. So you can see here when we came back to this liquidity point here, uh, we saw a little bit of trading in action again before it broke down again so once it broke down again you can see that once again another major liquidity point right here this is a very major liquidity point at 20k when that 20k blow got tapped we saw an insta bounce from uh 17k all the way to 24k creating another trading opportunity um obviously bears are still very bearish you know the fundamentals of the economics of everything is really scary still at this point so people are selling still people are selling their assets thinking that there's going to be a prolonged bear market which then drove things back to this liquidity point once again so you can see there's action at this liquidity point once again um creating a smaller bounce this time because there's just not that much momentum although there was some momentum right so when that bounce failed here we dropped right um this is kind of in a no man's land zone um there is no liquidity point where this consolidated and the reason that i think because of that is because there's probably a lot of stop losses here that we're waiting to think that this level right here was the point in which we would bottom right so obviously trading is entirely psychological uh we're playing against people with very large pockets that control the price and have enough coins to make the price go wherever they want. So considering there's probably a lot of stop losses here, right? But at the same time, these deep pockets people who sold the top here, sold here, they are looking to reaccumulate their purchases. So when they're looking to reaccumulate their purchases, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go below this area of support, stop everyone out, and then start accumulating again. And that's why you see this very large volume profile of volume that occurred at this level because they probably scooped up tons of coins at the 1670k level right preparing them for another bull run so when they start to pump the market again to whoever knows how much uh you know 100k 20 30k whatever um they were able to get these cheap prices which allow them and sets them up for the next run to make the most money on the next run um so yep yeah, there again, uh, we have this liquidity zone here. Obviously, it broke right through. You can see that there's a lot of lar large volume profile here. So if I suspect that if we are able to hold this price uh, above 20K, we're probably going to stay above 20K for a long time just because there's so much volume trading at this liquidity point. And there's not enough momentum to the downside to really put things back below it. People are now starting to reaccumulate their coin. So that is my lesson on liquidity zones, uh, supply and demand. You can use this essentially for any asset. Um, that is the logic behind it. You, you can see that we don't really need any fancy indicators to apply this logic. It's basic uh, trading knowledge that works and has always worked through the ages. Um, so that is my lesson for today. Uh, if you're not in our X-Trades channel yet, go to discord.gg slash X-Trades or check us out on xtrades.net. We have a web and mobile app that's Discord integrated. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here, guys. So uh, if you have any questions, just come in the chat, shoot me a DM. I'm, I'll be happy to help.